All right, welcome back to another episode of the All Automotive Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Clausen, and today we're coming to you from the GeForce Automotive Studios. Yes, we're proud to have them as a sponsor, GeForce Automotive. Your leader in the Jackson area for vehicle automotive repairs. Give them a call and schedule your service visit. Their phone number is 517-782-8755. Again, the GeForce Automotive Studios, and we're glad to have them as a partner of the All Automotive Podcast. So today, folks, we're talking about, in this episode, we're talking about advanced driver safety systems. And what's that, you might say? Well, it's that little triangle or that little light that lights up on your mirror that's the radar for you on the side, the collision avoidance. It's stuff like that. So in the next half hour, we're going to talk about some of these things. We'll maybe go from the front of the vehicle to the back of the vehicle and let you know if these things are useful and what they're for and why they're what their purpose in life is. So you can make an informed decision on if you want some of these features on your next vehicle. So we're going to talk about that. So let's let's start. So what's an advanced driver safety system? So we've had driver safety systems on our vehicles for several years. You know, the one first thing that comes to mind is anti-lock brakes. You know, the ABS systems started on the vehicles in the early 90s, and I was fortunate enough to be working at a car dealership at that time. And, you know, the first ones that came out were were, were ones that called uh, rear wheel anti-lock brakes, or we called it RWAL. So, and those were primarily on the Chevy trucks. And uh, I worked at a GM dealer. And anyway... <clears throat> So, and then they started introducing them on all the sedans and all the other vehicles. So, um, and there was a couple of different companies that were making these systems and that, that came up with that system, the anti-lock brakes. And, you know, what its purpose in life is, is to obviously, number one, the most important thing that the anti-lock brake system does is it keeps you in a straight line of path. So if you have to slam on the brakes in an emergency situation, say it's in snow, dry pavement, whatever, your vehicle will stop straight if the system is working correctly. So it's a uh, number one purpose is obviously to keep you in a straight line of path when you're slowing down or in your emergency braking situation. Also, in order to it, it also will stop you in the least distance possible without locking the wheels. So what happens when you lock the wheels? So you've, we've all watched racing. Maybe you haven't. Um, when you lock up the rear wheels or you lock up the brakes, all the weight and everything is transferred to the front. And then that leaves the rear just becomes really light. And then that comes around and it will put you in a skid. Okay, so they developed this thing for the rear rear wheels, number one, so that you didn't come around, it didn't come around on you, it didn't spin out, okay? So we live in Michigan, we've got snowy roads, and this is one of the big things I tell people when, they're, when they think there's black ice on the road. You know, most of the vehicles in, that you're driving today have anti-lock brakes. It's a standard feature on all vehicles. So you have anti-lock brakes. So you don't know if the road has got black ice. It's been raining and misting and now it's getting cold. So in a, if it's safe to do so, and there's no one close behind you or in front of you, apply the brakes hard enough to put your brake, put your vehicle in an anti-lock brake event. If the anti-lock brake system cycles and you hear it, it it's that little whirring noise that you hear when you step on the brakes or sometimes it's a chunk, chunk, chunk or a rear. Okay. So you'll hear the system go off or you have warning lights. Most likely that will say track 
low or low traction. Okay, and it normally is a little vehicle with squiggly lines behind it. Okay, so that light will light illuminate. So guess what? We know the roads are slick. If it doesn't come on and you slow down or you put your nose into the steering wheel, please don't do that. Um, but, you, you know, if your wheels don't lock and you don't see the lights and everything, the roads are probably okay or they're just wet. So, again, anti-lock brakes. It's been there f- since the 90s, folks. It's an, it's an ad- safety system, but... It might not be an advanced safety system. Well, it may be now, but it's the technology for anti-lock brakes has gone, has made leaps and bounds in those years, okay, since the early 90s. So that we now have emergency braking or collision avoidance systems. Okay, so now this system works alongside of the braking system and also the anti-lock braking system to stop you if, in fact, you are taking a look at that nice red Corvette that's in the guy's driveway as you're driving by and you turn back forward and, oh, my gosh, the delivery truck in front of you stopped. Okay? So now the system activates itself because it knows that you're not paying attention Potentially, not saying you guys are not paying attention, but let me just say it's happened before, so it can happen. It's nice when it's there and you stop and you don't rear end the delivery vehicle because you're looking at the nice red Corvette sitting in the guy's driveway and you might think about turning around and talking to that guy for a few minutes because you want to know what he's got in under the hood. Okay, so there's another one. The emergency braking or the collision avoidance. So this system has got a camera, which is most likely mounted in the grill area. You've seen them. I don't know. You know, I think the Jeep Grand Cherokees are the ones that kind of stick in my mind that are, it's quite noticeable in that front bumper. And it also, if the system's enabled and it's working properly, it, it will apply the brakes without you doing anything and it will slow the vehicle down. And I know the Jeeps and the Chryslers that have that feature will do that. So you want to keep that in mind. So there's, there's that camera down there and then that notices the distance between you and that vehicle. And if that, system is calibrated to a certain amount and if you're too close it's going to put the brakes on for you so if you've got this system enabled don't think you're just going to go shuffling through traffic and be less than a car length away from the car in front of you and switch lanes without that thing putting the brakes on for you because it'll do that and I don't know if if you've had if you've got a vehicle like that and you've experienced it. It's it's a it's initially it's a shock because you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Um, you know, I was test driving one of these Jeep Grand Cherokees and it had this system on it, and apparently the customer had it engaged, and I was um, going through traffic, and you know, I guess I got a little close to uh, the vehicle that I was merging into the other lane to get over to turn right onto the a road that comes by the shop. Anyways, this system just put the brake on for me and it slowed me down. And I initially I was like, whoa, what the heck is that? And I was like, oh, okay, it's got that system on it and it thought I was a little too close to that person. I don't really think I was, but I guess in, in, in retrospect, I, it, I probably was. And I don't test drive customers' cars that way. But it was one of those situations where you're in the left lane and you got to be in the right lane and because you got to turn right, but you got hung out into the left lane uh, because of one reason or another, and there was traffic, and I was trying to work my way in. And 
it didn't like the fact that I was a little too close to that car that was in front of me when I was merging into that lane. So it applied the brakes for me. And I, th- which was, you know, again, it was a little shocking at first, but you know, I got over it rather quickly and I thought, well, that's kind of a neat system. Maybe that's something that we need to talk about on the next podcast. So I started going through some of these other things and it's just like, there's so many advanced driver safety systems now. Um, so, so th- there's that. So you have those that we've already talked about, talked about. So now there's this other thing that back when I was working at the GM dealership, uh, they came out with this thing called stability track or stability control or um, VSC as Toyota calls it. And there's actually a light that illuminates in their dash that if there's an issue with that system, um, that light will come on. Um, but in general motors vehicles, it'll say service stability track if there's an issue. So what the stability track does is it corrects the vehicle in the event that you have in the event that you go out of control or the rear end is starting to come around one way or the other. What I mean by come around is it's like, okay, we've seen the guys that drift their cars and the back end is swung out or we've went to a a sprint car race in the dirt and they're, they're pitching the car um, to the right because we go around the track and we turn left. Okay. Um, so you're pitching the, the rear of the car to the right and it's coming around and you're steering towards it. Okay. So what the stability track system does or the vehicle stability control will do is it applies the brakes in, in such a fashion so that it straightens you out. So there's a couple of different sensors on this system and it's pretty cool. Um, it's got to know number one, where the steering wheel is at. So it's got a steering wheel position sensor. And then there's a, a lateral accelerometer. So that's how much force left and right, uh, you have. So when you're going around a curve and you're to the left and you're, you're on a clover leaf around on the highway and you're turning and it, and it turns to the left and you're pushing to the right. Okay. Your, your body goes to the right because of physics, right? So a lateral accelerometer, the steering wheel position sensor, and then it has a yaw sensor. So the yaw is the upward and downward tilt. And if you're a pilot, you know what I'm talking about. Um, the yaw sensor, most of those was lo- were located on the GM cars were located in the trunk area or on, uh, on a solid surface on the body uh, in an unobstructed area. And what, and what that does is it just, it, it, it feels like, you know, you're in a boat and you're tipping to one side or the other, like the waves are crashing, right? So that's your yaw back and forth, up and down, left and right. Okay. So what that's doing, and I'm moving back and forth. (laughs) You can't see me, but I'm moving back and forth. Anyway. um, So yeah. So there's the yaw sensor, the lateral accelerometer, and the steering wheel position sensor. And these three have to work in conjunction with each other to know if you've got lateral acceleration to one side or the other. And if your yaw is in such a fashion that it's going to apply this system. So the cool part about this is you're going along and, you know, as many of you know, I I have a, a Chevy Silverado and it's a, it's a 2015 model. It's got stability control on it. So in the winter months, it's a little frustrating for me, I guess, I, I don't know. I, maybe I shouldn't say this. I don't know. It, you, my driveway has a little bit of a curve to it. And sometimes I like to pitch the rear out and do a little drift up the driveway. Well, the stability control makes that not possible because it starts applying the brakes and the stability light comes on and it straightens the truck back out. So it, it takes all the fun out of drifting up my driveway. But it's a safety feature. So let's say you're in a, in a situation where you're driving down the road and you have to avoid somebody, you know, you have to avoid a deer or you have to 
make a quick adjustment and you pull yank the wheel and it and you go f- too far it's going to start applying those brakes and straighten your butt back out really quickly and it's quite amazing if you've never really kind of made it do it by itself but it's there so you know it's going to straighten you out so there's another system the the stability control and that's another system that's been on there for quite a long time. And it's kind of just sits in the background and yeah, I'm here. And if you need me, kind of like your, your, your favorite friend, your favorite best friend, you call them when you want to move or I'm moving, you know, my apartment, I, I need you to help me move a couch. Okay. I'll be there. Okay. I swerved to miss a raccoon in the road and now I'm out of control I'm here to straighten you back out. Okay, that's what that system does. So it's pretty cool. So as we get into another system, which, and these have been on there for quite a while, and most of them were the ones where you back up, is is a park assist. So... This park assist has ultrasonic sensors, which are located in the bumper. And you see them all the time. Those little dots, those little circles on the bumper that go around. That's what those are. Those are ultrasonic sensors, which notice that there's a bike behind your truck. So when you back up, you're, it's going to beep at you and say there's something behind you. You know, and since 2008... All vehicles have to have a backup camera of some sort. So you don't run over a kid's bike and bend it all up and have to go to Walmart and get him a new bike. Right? So the backup sensors were on on the vehicles for a long time. Now they put them on the front. So... Okay, you know, my, my Silverado's fancy enough to where it has one of these forward forward park assist too, which this thing's, it's kind of nice. You know, I'm not going to, not going to lie. It's, it's kind of nice because when you pull up into a parking spot and this thing is a behemoth, I mean, really, you know, we're talking about a full size truck and you're trying to park in these spots that are made for Ford Fiestas, right? So you're, you're pulling in and you're, and it's got, it's got, uh, four sensors on the front. So the two corner sensors, you know, you're pulling in and you're getting a little close to that car. You know, it gives you a little, it gives you a little bar graph that tells you how close you are. So if you ever want to test that system out, move, pull it into the garage. And, you know, most fancier cars will have this forward collision thing too. You'll pull in and then the, the graph will show you how close you are to the hitting that object. So I can put it about to the last yellow bar and there's like four of them. Then there's a red and then there's a solid tone that, you know, you're going to hit something, Matt, (laughs) back up or stop. Um, So that system's on there. And again, like I say, it's pretty cool because when you pull into a parking spot and you're pulling up and pulling up to get this big thing in that spot, you can pull up enough to where you know that you're not going to nudge that car in the parking lot and it helps helps you you know protect your vehicle and it's nice and the back the back ones are nice too because um not only will it flash a triangle exclamation point in the camera on the display but mine has like a uh, backup camera so that you can see all these things and also it's got grid lines too so you can when you turn your wheel it shows you where you're going to go so you can pretty much use the camera i don't know if you guys do or not but i i've kind of gotten used to these cameras and there's cars that come in that we work on and i'm backing out of the shop and i'm like where's the camera (laughs) it's become such a commonplace in most of these vehicles that when there's one that doesn't have it it's like and now I got to crank my neck around and look and back and see if what's there. And 
Okay. So you don't want to run anybody over. So let's make sure we don't do that. Okay. So those are, there's another couple of safety systems. We don't think about it as a, as a really safety system because of slow speed. But again, you don't want to run over your dog or your, you know, pet or something or the kid's bike, you know, and they, unfortunately these have been become uh, mandatory because of an incident where a child was unfortunately, you know, struck down. And so these systems are on there to help you avoid that stuff. So the other thing with backing out of the driveway too, and that there's a lot of different scenarios and I live in a very country rural place. So I have room to back around in my yard and pull out straight. Right. So I'm not backing out onto the road. A lot of people don't have that opportunity. And I'm pretty sure that if you're listening to my podcast, you might think, Matt, you know, I back out of my driveway. It's so darn busy. It's got cross lane protection so that it sees a car coming and will warn you in your backup camera. And now they'll vibrate the seat. Okay. So there's another safety system. And this kind of debuted on the Cadillacs, I think, to where it would vibrate the left side or the right side if there was an object that you were getting close to when you're backing out. Say you're backing out of the garage and, you know, the kid's little um, little tykes thing goes blowing in the wind and, you know, you're going to hit it. It's going to vibrate and tell you, hey, stop. So the cross lane traffic thing is is kind of nice because it works in conjunction with the blind spot monitor. So what they've done with these safety systems is they've put cameras in the back or not cameras, excuse me. So what they've done with this type of safety system is they've put radar sensors in the rear bumper area and they're on the left and the right corners. So when you're going down the road and whatever, whatever brand vehicle you've got, if it has a um, rear collision warning system on it, um, it's going to light up a light potentially in the mirror and, or it's on the, it's on the a pillar and that's the pillar that separates the windshield from the door. Okay. That's the, the a post we call it in the automotive industry. And I've seen them in there or it's going to be, it's going to be in your vision somewhere to tell you where that car is coming from, whether it's on the right mirror or the left mirror. Now my wife has a 2021 Traverse and hers are in the mirrors. So on that vehicle, there's a little triangle that comes up. So when there's a car coming at 85 miles an hour and you're, you know, going down the highway and it's moving pretty at a good clip, this radar picks this up and will pick it up if it's moving quicker than normal and will tell you, hey, don't go out in that lane or don't switch lanes because this person's coming. And it'll also, if you turn the turn signal on, flashes, it says, hey, man, don't do it. Okay. And it's there. It is, it's helpful. It's certainly helpful. It's helped me. I, you know, I have the opportunity to drive that car uh, quite frequently. And, you know, it, unfortunately, it's just got this big blind spot. And I was telling the guys at the shop this the other day. I'm like, man, this thing's just got a huge blind spot. And if you turn to look... You know, it's a four-door vehicle and you got to turn to look and then you're looking through the back window, which is, you know, tinted dark, which makes it harder to see. Okay, no problem. But in, in the in the dark, you know, people got their lights on, so it's a little easier to see them most, most of the time. But, you know, we're driving down the highway and you're merging on and you're cranking your neck around to try to look and all of a sudden that light lights up. Well, okay. That's just saved me. You just saved yourself and maybe the guy that was coming and four other people because you hit them and they're, you know, it's out of control. So the rear collision warning 
is is very helpful. And that's one of the one of the biggest things that I would recommend that if you're going to get a new vehicle, that's one of the things that I would I would most definitely want on a vehicle that's got some of these advanced driver safety systems on them. So now they've got uh, lane departure warning. And this is something that's been on GM vehicles for quite a number of years. And there's a camera that's mounted usually up in the windshield area that recognizes the dashes or the paint in the road. So what it recognizes is the line on the right. Okay, so it's the white line on the right. So if you start to drift over to the right and you start going off the road, this thing will start beeping at you and making noise or whatever the warning would be. And nowadays it vibrates the seat, it, it sets off a warning, and it'll tell you, hey, you're, you're changing lanes. Are you sure that that's what you want to do? Because this um, line is solid. So if it's a dashed line, it also knows that too. So if you're going to the left, you don't want to go into oncoming traffic if you're on a two-lane road, right? But it'll also, it also notices that the center dashed line is white and not yellow, and also that you can move through that lane without it going off. And then also, once you get to the left lane on the highway say it's a two lane two lane highway both directions so four lane highway whatever you get to the furthest left lane and there's a solid line there so it's going to tell you lane departure over there too so remember that folks when you get your windshield changed that now you're the safe light glass or you know the the glass company now has to calibrate this camera so that it can see correctly so that your lane departure warning will work. And then the forward collision camera, it needs to be calibrated as well. So if you ever have any body work and so forth, these guys have to be trained in that kind of stuff to uh, make your vehicle back to original equipment or back to pre-accident condition. So we've gone over quite a few of them. I don't know if I've missed any, but there's a couple of other systems which I've, I've liked that come out and I'll mention a couple of them is the 360 degree view of the car that uses cameras in the mirrors, cameras, the rear camera, and it also uses a a front camera as well. And these are the little ones. So what it does is it, it physically puts a picture of a car of your car on the screen. And normally this is like in reverse if you're backing out or if you, there are some vehicles where you can turn it on um, when you're going forward. If you're going slow enough, it pops up. I mean, this is kind of a, a more fancy way of doing the um, park assist So it also helps you park. But this also too, they also put this on the new Chevy trucks too, is where you're backing up to your trailer. You could turn this thing on and now you can see all the way around your truck. And when you're paying attention to turning to the left and you know, you're in a tight spot, let's say you're trying to load the horse trailer and you're getting in between two fences and you're at the, the rodeo or wherever you're at, at the horse show and there's this fence, and you actually turn the wheel to the left to crank, and the front of the truck comes around to the right, and, and beep, 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 hold on, we're going to hit this post. You can now see that post and potentially visually stop because you've visually seen it or stop because you've visually seen it instead of beep, 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 you know, where is it, the front or the rear? I'm not really sure, Okay. So that, that's, that's pretty cool too. So one of the other things that they've 
developed now with this advanced driver safety systems is the adaptive cruise. Now Honda's got this on there and I've had a customer that um, had this on there and, and you get into a little bit of congested traffic, it's a little difficult and you can set the distance that you want to be from the other car. And gosh, I want to say that that Mazda had it. Mazda's got it on their, their cars. Cause we rented a vehicle in Texas when we went to Waco and man, it had it on it. And it was, it was kind of neat. I was using it on I-35 and it's nice because you set it and you know, we all have that distance where we want to be away from the car in front of us. Right. And you know, or if you think back and I'd have to think back a long, a long ways, but my driver training teacher, you know, used to tell us, Hey, a car length for every 10 miles an hour. So, you know, on the highway, it's a little different. And nowadays, you know, yeah, you kind of want to be two or three car lengths away from somebody and it's 75 miles an hour or 70 miles an hour. It's what the speed limit here is in Michigan. And it's 75 somewhere, some places too. So we all have that comfortable, like I say, we all have that comfortable distance that we like to have between the car in front of us. So it will allow you to increase that distance or decrease that distance. And I was kind of playing with it on our way from Dallas to Waco um, because you get out there and there you're and Texas is big. So it, it's like, there's literally not a whole lot between Dallas and Waco. Really? I mean, there, there's, there's a ton, trust me, but on this highway there, it just seems like it's, it was very, it's rural, you know, it's, it's out there. You, you come along um, cities every now and then, but um, I was trying to, you know, you try to pace yourself between this car and the car in front of you. And, you know, I, I wanted to be a certain distance away from this car. So if this car in front of me slowed down, so did we, because we were trying to keep the same distance away because the car was keeping the same distance away. So I said, okay, there's, there was the button that you could push on the steering wheel that you could change that. So when it started getting a little congested, you could reduce that distance so that it would give you a little bit of leeway. So once that car started pulling away from you, it's not going to really speed up. It's going to go back to where you had the cruise set, but it'll also slow down if they're slowing down too, which was kind of nice. So you're really not having to hit the brake, hit resume, hit the gas. You know, it made it a lot nicer to have the cruise control on Plus, we were setting that distance between that car in front of me that I felt comfortable with. So if you have one of these adaptive cruises, and I encourage you to try it out and use it and and see what the difference is. I mean, if it's bumper-to-bumper traffic and you're in L.A., and it, it's just, that's probably not a good idea. It's not something that you want to use because it's, you know, stop and go, and you're not really using the cruise at all anyway. But if you're going to Las Vegas, I mean, come on. You know, there's some wide open roads there where, you know, just set this baby and you're following your buddy to, or whatever, you can just keep a good pace and keep a good distance and not have to worry about if the person in front of you is keeping good pace or has a cruise control on or not. So there's a lot of different variables and it was kind of neat because it would, you know, you put it on the shortest setting and man, it was about a car length or so away from, from the car in front of you, but you could get that up to like four to five car lengths, I thought. And that was quite a good distance, but it kind of started losing touch because you, you know, you'd go over, you know, you have a couple of hills or a rise in the low, you know, or a turn or something like that. So it's trying to, you know, it's using this radar sensor to, to adapt itself to keep you at the same speed. So really the, the middle setting on the, I thought was the best. 
on that particular vehicle. And I think it was a, uh, I'd have to look at the, the receipt, but I want to say it was a Mazda 6. So adaptive cruise, there's that too. And it's on Hondas, it's on, it's on GM vehicles, it's on Mazdas, it's on Fords, it's on a lot of, lot of new vehicles out there. So I encourage you to check into that too. All right, that's going to do it for another episode of the All Automotive Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Clausen. We'd like to thank all of our loyal listeners for taking a listen today. We'd also like to remind you that we're on all major podcast platforms. Give us a follow, give us a like, leave a review. That all helps. Stay tuned for our next episode as we talk to fellow podcaster Zach Hurst from the EV Resource Podcast. We're going to be talking to him about what's going on with all these electric vehicles and get his insight. He does a weekly podcast called EV Resource, and we're excited to talk to him. Again, thanks for listening. I'm Matt Clausen saying keep the greasy side down.